I'm Claire Evelyn, design enthusiast and space curator. I've been designing and coaching clients for seven years, helping you create beautiful and functional spaces by learning new techniques, understanding research, and making mindset changes is my area of expertise. I want you to live in a space that compels and inspires you. I created the Spaces Speak podcast to facilitate discussions about higher purposes in design and how anyone can integrate intentional design into their daily lives to improve their habits, routines, and reach their goals. I interview intriguing guests from a variety of disciplines, artists, psychologists, entrepreneurs, authors, and more. Anyone who has knowledge to share to help people redesign their space and transform their life. Before we dive in, I want to tell you about my free design quiz. The quiz will help you figure out not only what interior design style suits you, but also how to get started executing that style in your home. Just head over to trimspaces.com and the button to take the quiz is right there on the home page. Welcome to another episode of Spaces Speak. Today I'm interviewing Katie Lee Jackson. Katie Lee is an artist, wallpaper designer, and slow living advocate. She helps homeowners find the magic in the everyday with her calm and inspiring designs. She creates art that speaks from the heart, but also takes people back to a slower way of living. Illustration is a way to tell stories, to showcase magic, and to bring art into homes in a variety of ways, from prints to wall decor. Modern magic is her way of creating art that touches your soul and takes you back to a memory you never want to lose, one that keeps you grounded and reminds you that slow and steady wins the race. Her goal is to create art that helps you slow down and see the magic in the everyday, all while providing you with the highest quality and sustainably sourced materials whenever possible. Welcome to Spaces Speak. Thanks so much for being on the show. I appreciate um, you taking the time. Yeah, I'm so excited to do this. (laughs) So tell me, how did you get into designing wallpaper? It's such a um, specific creative niche, I guess. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it's really funny because I don't actually know what I, why I decided to do this. I, uh, I've been in marketing for the last 10 years, helping people with their social media and their email marketing and just kind of developing a full overall strategy. And in the last like year or two, I was just like, I don't love this. This doesn't set my soul on fire. I'm really tired of doing it. And I got back into doing just my regular art. I'm a trained painter. I went to school for painting and I got back into that. And then all of a sudden I had this idea of, well, I'm obsessed with wallpaper. Like there's wallpaper all over my house. (laughs) What if I, like, how do you design wallpaper? How do you make a repeat pattern? And so I took an online course on how to do it. And then I just went, way into it. And I was like, this is what I want to do with my life. I just want to design wallpaper for people's homes. <laughs> Aww. That's amazing how you discovered that though, because I feel like a lot of people are looking for that passion all the time and are having a hard time finding it. I mean, my advice is just try everything. And my family will attest to that. I've had more jobs than any person. Like in high school, I would change jobs every six months because I'd get bored. Yeah. And it was, you know, you just keep trying things and then sooner or later you figure out what you like and it sticks. Right. Right. Um, shoot. You know what? I meant to ask you the signature question first, but that's okay. We'll do things a little out of order today and we'll circle back right. around. <laughs> but what is the, <laughs> what's the most interesting piece of furniture or decor or wallpaper <laughs> in your home that you wanted to share? So I thought about this one a lot and it's hard because I have a lot of like antique pieces that were from my grandmother. And I would say all of those are my favorite pieces. Uh, um, my sewing table, which I've turned into a painting table is probably the most interesting that there's like, it like folds out. And then there's like a big hole in the middle where the sewing machine pops up. But I've just put down like a piece of like wood on top of it so that I can set paints and stuff on top of it. Oh, and awesome. I'm in the process of removing the uh, sewing machine so I can put lights 
in there and then I want to put glass on top so then it becomes like a light board so that I can do tracing and stuff yeah but it's really cool because it was my grandmother's now given I never witnessed my grandmother sew anything so did she ever (laughs) use this thing probably not but it was hers and I know that and so it means everything to me (laughs) oh that's so funny (laughs) do you think did she inherit it from somebody I don't I mean, the table, maybe the sewing machine is not super old. Like it's not like one of those like pedal pushing ones or anything like mm-hmm. it's, it's pretty new. So my, my guess is no, my, I think she, this one she got herself. Yeah. That's it's, really special though. Why. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I talk a lot about in my business, having pieces that are beautiful and functional. So, you know, taking something that's meaningful and I'm sure beautiful and functional is probably, um, brings a lot of meaning or, you know, brings a lot of happiness and joy into the space that you have it in. Well, and with my design aesthetic, I love mixing the old with the new. So having those antique pieces that were passed down from generations, it's just so cool. They have such great stories and things are just not built the way they were a hundred years ago. So having that timelessness is always wonderful. And then you mix it with like, you know, like right next to my sewing table, I have a velvet chair that was obviously made in the last five years. Like, (laughs) and then I have wallpaper that is obviously modern and not antique. And, and then it just all kind of tells this really beautiful story. Is that something that you incorporate into your designs, the old and the new? I would say probably a little bit right now most of the designs probably feel more new they're very illustrative they they fit my painting style but um I have three collections currently and one of the collections is design is called honeysuckle and it's based off of summers at my grandparents house and so they only live like 30 minutes away but I just remember going there in the summer and having barbecues and celebrating the fourth of July and they had this like wall on their deck that was just covered in honeysuckle And I can remember the exact day that my brother informed us that you can eat honeysuckle. Like you just (laughs) pop off the head and then you slurp out the nectar and it's sweet. And our world was changed. Like this was (laughs) so much fun to then go and like pop off all the heads on the honeysuckle and see the hummingbirds coming. And so, um, so there's like, uh, I think there's 12 designs all correlated to that. And those feel probably a little bit more nostalgic. There's a lemon pattern and um, there's just like a good variety in there that, that do feel a little bit older with a, with a modern twist. I mean, it's definitely not your grandmother's wallpaper. So right. it's, it's fun and storytelling, telling, but it does give you those nostalgic feelings of your favorite memories growing up. Sounds like it's um, a really good portrayal of, of you and your aesthetic and your, your personality. Yes, I would say that's very <laughs> accurate. <laughs> That's awesome. So going back a little bit, how did you, you said you had a lot of different jobs and you um, are a trained artist. Did you, I see, I saw that you have some really beautiful prints on your website, but were you doing that mainly for a while or no? no. I, it's funny. Um, there's this great book called Art and Fear, which anybody who's somewhat creative should totally read it. It's teeny tiny. It'll take you like an hour to read. Um, but the opening chapter talks about how it's like 90% of art students will stop doing art the day they graduate. Oh my God. And they just like, don't pick it up anymore because you don't have this like dedicated time to do it and the space to be creative. And like, how do you make money doing this? And I read this book in college and I was like, that will never be me. Like I cannot live without art. And sure (laughs) enough, the day after I graduated, I just really didn't do it. I mean, there were days like throughout the years, you'll see my sketchbooks. Like it probably has taken me like 10 years to finish one sketchbook. And there's just like random paintings every once in a while where I'm going like through something traumatic in life. And I'm like, I just need to do art. And that's the only art that I did for that year. Oh wow! Um, whereas in the last year, I've like, I've already filled up a sketchbook for one year. I've probably filled up maybe even two or three sketchbooks in the last year. And so Yeah. So it was this thing that I just kind of stopped doing because I was like, well, you can't make money doing art. So I need to find something where I can make money. So I went into graphic design and then I went into marketing and, and all those things have done beautiful things. And I've learned amazing things and I've got to get to know great businesses and people. Um, But it was just time to really come back to the the fully creative part of me. Do you think um, you would be 
designing wallpaper if you hadn't learned the marketing skills? I might be designing it, but I don't know if it would be going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's a good point. I've recently learned that, well, I've been trying to kind of move um, my business completely online and mm -hmm. oh my gosh, marketing is, it is truly an entire world. It's insane just how, how much learning there is to do. And so I imagine if you had that background and then you go from the marketing back to the art, you have that background, you're able to, like you said, basically monetize it and do something that you love because you have those skills to, to monetize it. Yeah. I mean, it, marketing is definitely, it's a challenge no matter what business you're in, like as a marketer in a marketing business, it was hard to market my marketing business. <laughs> it's, it's makes it so much harder when you're like that close to it. And so being inside your own business, I still go out and talk to other people I know who are in marketing and be like, okay, why am I not doing like, what is not working for this? And, and they'll be like, well, you just need to do this. And you're like, duh, that's like the most simple thing ever. But because you're so close to it, it's just always so much harder for your own business. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, do you have any words of, I'm, I'm selfishly going to ask for <laughs> advice. Do you have any words of wisdom just in general <laughs> doing an online business? I mean, it all comes down to knowing your customer. What is it that your customer wants? How do you add value? All of that is just the basis of marketing for me that it's not necessarily about trying to sell you this thing. It's understanding the problem really well, making sure you feel that your customer feels taken care of. And then on the days that I'm not just selling a ton, I'm, I'm adding value always. So I have a weekly newsletter that goes out and it talks 90% of the time about tips about living a slower, calmer life. And then every once in a while, you'll get an email about like, oh, I just launched a new collection or I'm having a sale on art prints, but it's a lot more giving than taking. Right. Right. So that definitely goes back to your mission that I read online. I'll read it for yeah. <laughs> listeners to help create the feeling of home, to inspire rest and to lead my community to a healthier way of living creatively slowly and with intention. So how did yeah. you um, kind of land on that? If I'm sure it was, it's been a process, but that slow way of living, how have you landed on that for your mission? Yeah, it is my constant goal, struggle, <laughs> life of, <laughs> of trying to move slower. I, um, especially in the, the height of COVID, I had a lot of health problems. I had a lot of issues with um, stress and burnout. And so it's been a process just since then of really honing in on, all right, let's get into a yoga practice. Let's work on breathing techniques. Let's like, what are ways that I can find that slow me down? And art was such a great way of just really getting me to come back to my center, to just feel relaxed and to be in tune with myself. And so um, I try and do as much things with intention as possible. And that's just simply asking the question of why am I doing this? Why am I painting this picture? Why am I eating this food? Why do I feel so stressed out in my body right now? Whatever, whatever is happening in your life in the very moment, you can ask the question why, and, and then you can put intention behind it. And if there's an answer of like, I don't know why I'm doing this. Well, maybe you don't need to be doing it. And maybe this isn't the thing to do. And, and that's just become this, like the slow process. And then as I, I grew into doing more um, home decor type products, I love having people over at my house and like we host, we hosted a tea party just two weeks ago for it's like co-ed tea party, husbands and wives come over. I love herbs. So I set up an entire table of um, loose leaf herbs so that people can mix their own teas and learn how to make their own teas, which is kind of fun. Cool. And yeah, it's just like this really great event that we get to spoil our friends with. And I had a friend leaving and as he was leaving, he said, oh, we've got all of these other events we have to go to today but it was so great starting here because I feel so grounded now. And I was like, oh, that's exactly what I want our home to feel like. I want you to come in and I want you to feel calm and safe and grounded, but I also want you to feel inspired. Like what can you leave here and go create or go do? And, and then I was like, well, how do other people get that in their homes? How do they create spaces that feel calming, but also feel really inspiring? And so the color palettes I use in all my wallpapers are meant to be a little bit more neutral. So they're not like beige or gray. 
They're still mm -hmm. colors, but they're not as high intensity. So they feel really soothing, even if it's like a crazy pattern with palm leaves and animals in it that you're like, that one's called hide and seek. And you're literally trying to find all the animals I've hidden in this wallpaper, oh, um, fun. but it's still calming. <laughs> right. Right. Because of the and, design. Um, yeah. Yeah. And like, even when w that one um, is part of my, my pure life collection, which was inspired by our trip to Costa Rica last year. And it was like, when I was sitting in our Airbnb in the middle of this rainforest, I was so calm. And it's just like, the different shades of palm leaves and like the way that the light hits things like there's just all these calming even though there's complete chaos around you it just <laughs> still felt calming and so how do we bring that into our home so that's kind of kind of the journey of getting to that mission yeah wow that's beautiful um oh you, got, you just get me so excited because I'm always trying to kind of coax that information out of clients right and say how do you want your space to feel and then what experiences have you had that have made you feel that way? And let's use that for inspiration, right? Because you can't beat experiences. And so I love yeah. that your um, your collections are based off of those experiences. I think, did you say you have three collections? Yeah, yeah. so then the third one is the Divine Feminine. And okay. so that one's a lot, um, it's obviously a lot more feminine, but it uses a lot more like rusty, oranges and maroons and um there's a couple there's like a star pattern in there that I'm really obsessed with that uh, comes in a couple different colorways and um I personally think it would be like the perfect wallpaper for an office I just think mm -hmm. really anyone in that collection would be so great in an office and give you this kind of that divine goddess power inside of your your space so that you can feel like you can take on the world I love that <laughs> So what do you think it is about wallpaper versus just paint that, I mean, I think paint color does change your environment and affect, you know, your, how you're feeling and everything, mm -hmm. but wallpaper just does it so much more. And I don't think it's just because there's a pattern on it. I don't know. I think there's something else to it. I think it's, um, I think it's a couple of things. Wallpaper, we associate with an older age. Like you think of your grandparents when you think of wallpaper. So True. I do think there's like, there's totally a nostalgia just from wallpaper in itself. And over the next few years, that might change some because it is getting more and more popular. Um, mm -hmm. But it tells a story. And we as humans love stories. We feel connected to stories. So like in my office, I have an art deco pattern on my wall. It's, there's a blue wall behind me, but on that side, there's an art deco. And it feels very 1920s. It feels very vintage. It tells this story of like kind of high class, you know, vintage vibes. Mm -hmm. Whereas, <laughs> you know, yeah, exactly. Like um, it feels very feminine, but it's still like structured. And then like, if you were to add, say like my lemon wallpaper to your kitchen, there's a nostalgia just from the fact that it's wallpaper, but also this idea of lemons in the kitchen feels like the 1950s. I don't know why. Mm -hmm. um, but it also like, it might remind you of a story of like, um, my, when I grew up, we went to my aunt's beach house in Santa Barbara and my aunt, um, happens to live in an area that's right next door to where Oprah used to live. And so oh, cool. the, she became friends with the gardener there and the gardener would bring over, um, Oprah's lemons and oranges. And so <laughs> when I see these lemons, I start thinking of like my trips to California, but I also think of the time that I had Oprah's lemons and like, not very many people can say that. <laughs> no, <laughs> that's so funny. <laughs> and so, yeah, so just this way of connecting. And then the last reason I think people love it is it's a statement piece. Like not, not everybody's utilizing wallpaper, but even if they are like having a blue wall, you can, anybody can have a blue wall, but having that paper, like odds are you're not going to just go find that paper again. It's, mm -hmm. you got to search, you got to find the right one. And so Anytime you have wallpaper, it really is a statement in that room. Yeah. And I think for if you're the one choosing it, obviously, if you didn't move into the house or something, yeah, you can portray your personality and your style so much more than with just paint color in a room. Right. Um, yeah. And so then the paint color goes off of it too. Like it, right. you can add more depth by choosing what paints go with it. So like the pink wallpaper I have in my office it's the art deco one like I paired it with a dark blue wall like not everybody would choose that most people would be like oh I'm gonna I'm gonna pair it with like a light pink wall so it kind of blends in but then 
you've got the, the gold accents in the wallpaper that pop or there's just all these other ways that you can play with it. It just adds so much more depth. Yeah, exactly. So how do you recommend people choose a wallpaper? <laughs> oh man. I get asked that a lot. <laughs> That's a hard one. Um, you know, it's, it's always like a case by case basis of, I, I would look at wallpapers and see what really speaks to you. What mm-hmm. something that just stands out that pops and you're like, Oh my God, that's so great. Even if it's really crazy bold and you're like, I'm a beige person. I don't do crazy bold, but for some reason I love this wallpaper. Maybe it's something that you just add as the backing to a bookcase. And so it's a really small amount and that doesn't feel as overwhelming. Um, or maybe you're just ready to go crazy and be bold and you do an entire bathroom in it and it just feels amazing. And that's your one space in the house where you went wild and crazy. Um, but I think it's really just starting to explore. I would start with a color, like what color you want for the room. Do I want it a green base or a blue or a pink? And then from there, figure out the crazy patterns just because there's a lot of options. Like if you're not just looking at my collection, if you look at all wallpaper that's out there, you just Google wallpaper. There's more options than there are color options. So it can be a little overwhelming. (laughs) Yeah, right. (laughs) And then a hundred percent get samples because Mm -hmm. you want to feel it. You want to make sure the texture is right. And then you want to make sure the color works in your room. And I tape them up to a wall and I look at it at every different time of day because the light changes in your room. So it might look great when the sun is directly on it, but when the sun's not on it, it looks really dark and it, you don't like the, the way it feels in that room, but that room, the majority of the day is dark. That's not going to mm-hmm. be a good fit for you. So yeah, um, exactly. for sure, get the samples. And trying it out at night too with lamps, because that's a totally, yeah. and overhead lighting is completely different yeah. than daylight. Yeah. Um, yeah. What, what would you recommend for, um, actually installing it because there's so many ways you know you could do an accent wall you could do half bottom half of a wall top half of a wall how do you how do you choose how you install it um it's really about well part of it's the size of the room so like bathrooms I love like a small bathroom like the guest bath where it's just like the sink and the toilet I love it completely covered in a wallpaper Mm -hmm. it's because you don't spend that much time in it And when you're in there, you're literally sitting and just like looking around, waiting to be done going to the bathroom. (laughs) So you have something to look at now and it's just kind of fun. Um, But other smaller rooms that you have, like if your office is kind of small, putting it on all four walls might just make you feel like you're in a cave and be a little bit too overwhelming. So a smaller Mm -hmm. space that isn't a bathroom, I usually do an accent wall and just do one wall. Um, Another great option is doing the the half where I do like a... um, is it called keyboard or something like batten board that goes on the bottom half of the wall mm-hmm. and then doing the wallpaper on the top half that gives a lot of breathing room so that you're like yeah oh there's this nice clean usually like I mean I'm a white person so I would go white um you could do gray or beige or something neutral and I mean or dark if you wanted to be really dramatic you could do dark again small spaces dark doesn't usually go well together if you don't want it to feel uber cozy <laughs> um but yeah so then you can just do the top half with something and then the, there's a variety within the wallpaper. So if you're choosing a really intense, bold pattern that's got a lot going on, that's going to make a space feel smaller versus a pattern that's like, maybe it's a smaller print so that when you step back, it looks more like a texture versus just a pattern. Mm-hmm. That's going to be a little bit more approachable too. So people who are just starting out and are really afraid of wallpaper or are really afraid of color or pattern, I usually start them with those kind of patterns where it when you step back, it just looks like a texture and you're like, you wouldn't know that that's a pattern. And then you get up closer and you're like, oh, look at all these details in it. And, and that feels a little bit more approachable for people. And then there's some of those that come in more neutral tones too, so that you're getting that pattern, but it might be like, you know, beige and white so that it's really calm and feels approachable for your first time. (laughs) Right. Ease into it. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. And then one day you will have it everywhere, just like you. <laughs> and then you you might turn out like me and have it in every single room. <laughs> <laughs> um, you mentioned the text, uh, ha- the texture. Do you have any actually like textured wallpaper? Yeah. So my line comes in four different types of wallpaper. Mm. My absolute favorite is grass cloth. It is super textured. It is like literally woven grass. 
Um, it, it adds another element because the panels won't line up perfectly. Just there's all, you're always going to see a little bit of a seam. So it kind of adds to that exaggeration. But if you're like, I love this pattern and it needs to look like a smooth seam, you don't want grass cloth. It's grass cloth right. is also a lot more expensive just because it's sustainably made. Um, it's a more labor intensive process. It's just mm -hmm. a more expensive material. Um, then I have a peel and stick wallpaper, which is made on a, like a linen fabric. And when I got the sample of this paper, I, I could not believe it was peel and stick. It was my favorite of all of the wallpapers. Cause it's like a thicker paper, but it looks like linen. So it's got kind of those like texture, like grid lines on it. It just feels so good. It's beautiful. And then I have just a regular, like you have to add paste to the wall, you stick it up. Um, it's a matte finish and then one that's water adhesive. So you just add water to it and it's got a little bit of a shine to it. Um, but both the peel and stick and the water adhesive are removable. Um, mm -hmm. and the, and the water, um, adhesive is also recyclable. So you can put it in your recycling bin if you decide you're done with it. So great that's for renters. Yeah, that's great. I've never heard of the water one before. I've dealt with the other types, but yeah, yeah, never the water. That's really cool. How easy I is that for somebody? Yeah, I haven't, I haven't tried installing it, so I don't know what the installation is like with the water-based one. But um, I do like that it is that you can just take it down too, because mm -hmm. so many people don't own their homes, and it's like you still want to be able to make beautiful spaces with really fun water uh, wallpaper, and now you can. Now you can and easily remove it. I imagine it would be more like the adhesive installation where when you put it up, you have a little bit of time to move it around a yeah, little bit versus I would think the so peel too. and stick. It's like, okay, if you put it down wrong, you got to take it all off. Yep. <laughs> Reposition it. Yeah. <laughs> but um, shoot, sorry. I just, question just flew completely out of my mind. That's all right. I'll come back to it. <laughs> um, so we talked about the inspiration for your three collections, but how do you approach the actual designs of them? Like the yes. layouts and colors and such? Yeah. So I start, I usually get some sort of like theme or idea of what I want it to be. And then I'll go to a sketchbook and I'll just create a bunch of thumbnail ideas of what roughly this finished product could look like. And then once I have all those, I now have an, a rough understanding of the different motifs, which are the individual elements that are in each wallpaper um, are going to be. And then I get to painting. So I hand paint. I mean, I'd say 90% of it is hand painted. And then I digitize it. So I take it into my computer. I turn it into a vector image so I can use it in Illustrator. And then I could kind of start playing around with objects on Illustrator and creating the actual repeat pattern. And based on the colors that I've painted with are usually where a lot of the color schemes will come from. But um, I kind of have a neutral palette that I just currently love, which are these like greens, blues, and like rusty oranges. And so those have just been making their way into everything that I do. And I'm sure, you know, a year or two from now, I'll be like, oh, I really love this color right now. And then that will just make it into everything. And I don't even mean to do it. I just look at it afterwards and I'm like, oh, look, this color is in absolutely everything I've painted in the last month. Like whether it's wallpaper <laughs> or prints or whatever it is, like it's everywhere. And just subconsciously, I guess you get drawn to colors and you're stuck with them. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say you're wearing those colors. You've got the blue shirt and the rest of your yep. <laughs> yep, they're and they're all over my website right now. Like, it's a thing. I never thought I looked good in like orange until like a year ago. And now it's everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, that's, um, that's interesting. So do you think that the, well, I guess you said the, co the colors are kind of similar across all of the collections, but do you think each collection really has its own look and feel or is each wallpaper kind of stand on its own? I would say you can definitely look at, so if you look at my website and you see it as a whole, you would be like, oh, I could mix and match pretty much any of these wallpapers. Like the same greens are used throughout them. However, mm -hmm. you could also look at it and be like, well, that's obviously part of the Honeysuckle collection. And that's obviously part of the Pure Life collection. And so they do definitely stand out as that. But because I use a very similar color palette, I wanted you to be able to feel like you could mix and match them. So while you might not put them in the same room, it's nice to have the same colors throughout the home so that the home feels cohesive. Mm -hmm. So you might have like 
a really like the hide and seek super tropical one we want to put in our master bathroom but then like downstairs we're going to put um one of the Lux B ones so it's part of the honeysuckle collection so next to each other you'd be like well these ones don't they don't tell the same story by any means but color wise they do have a through line like they make sense mm -hmm. so subconsciously as people are going through your home or as you're in your own home it just all feels really cohesive because it's on the same color palette, even if you're telling different stories in different rooms. Right, right. Yeah, no, that's great advice. Um, going back to the installation advice, have you ever yeah. done the, um, just where you have like a, a trim, like a panel made out of wood and you only fill inside the panel with the wallpaper? Does that makes sense? I have not done that. I don't know if I'm well, That's an interesting that idea. <laughs> <laughs> I did that in a, a past dining room and it that one was it wasn't a repeat pattern but now I'm thinking it would be really cool to do it with a repeating pattern that one was more of a mural you know peel and stick but to have yeah. multiple panels with the wallpaper contained inside of it I think would be really beautiful um yeah that's a cool idea yeah so how do you pick the um paint color to go in the rest of the room or how would you well I guess how do you pick and then also how would you uh recommend people pick a paint color to pair with your wallpaper yeah I mean if you're pairing it with your wallpaper one of the best ways to do it is to get a sample of the wallpaper and either take it with you to the like paint store and then you can just like go through and find the paint samples that match exactly or if you want to like really make things pop, you can do contrasting colors. Mm -hmm. So if I have like a really green based uh, wallpaper, but there might be some other elements, like again, with the hide and seek example, um, there's like two cans in there. And so the two cans have like an orange and yellow beak. I might be like, well, it'd be really cool to pull out the orange in the two can beak. Let's see if I can match that. Mm -hmm. And so you might do that, or you might just be like, well, I have this green wallpaper. It's mostly green. And I just, I really like the color like rust. I just really want a rusty orange. And then you take it and you can just kind of compare it with other colors. Do I want it to be really light and subtle? Do I want it to be really deep and moody? All of that. And, th and that's the thing is what is the overall feeling of the room that you're trying to create? Is it, mm -hmm. if it's dark and moody, obviously you want deeper, richer colors, lots of saturation. If you want it to feel really bright and open, you want lighter colors, you want to get closer to the side of white, um, just so that you have the reflection off of it. And um, and then you can also, you know, then you can get into like the textures of if you want a ton of light and you're still using dark colors, you can get a wallpaper that's got a little bit more of a sheen to it so that it reflects light and it makes things feel a little bit bigger. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That changes things for sure. I know um, there's so many options. I mean, it's just an are. overwhelming experience. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. What about hanging art on top of wallpaper? 100% love it. I, on my wall, I mean, I'm an artist, so I have too much art to begin with. <laughs> um, I have gallery walls on wallpaper. Um, I usually try and do something usually like a smaller repeat pattern or something that feels a little bit more like a texture versus like, um, you know, my pattern that has the lemons on it. It's got these big, you know, pretty, I don't know, they're like the size of your palm lemons that are like spaced out with stripes that mm -hmm. putting a bunch of artwork on top of that is probably going to feel super overwhelming. Um, there's probably a way to do it. Like if you framed the art in really big frames with really large mats, so that there's all this extra white space around it. You could probably do something like that to kind of tone it down. Um, otherwise, I usually stick with like a little bit smaller patterns so that when you step back, they look more like a texture. And um, yeah, just something a little bit less really crazy so that the art can stand out and it has its moment on there. But yeah, 100% right, right. love artwork on wallpaper. Now, the one thing you do need to remember is I'm often the kind of person that likes to go hang paintings. I'll just go up and I'll just hammer a nail on the wall and then I'll step back and be like, that's the wrong spot for it. And I'll just take out the nail and I'll hammer it in a new spot. And now I have all these holes in my wall. And that's so often how I do things with wallpaper. You can't do that. It's like you nail it once and it, it needs to be good to go because fixing that hole is way more work than you want to put into it. Yeah. Yeah. Not going to happen. A little more planning yeah. needs to be. Yeah be made yeah I agree that's funny um 
let's see. So, oh, I was curious, what does your creative process, like, how does it differ? I know we talked about it a little bit with the wallpaper. How is it different with your um, art prints? Um, I would say it's not too different. I'm currently finishing a collection for an art show I'm doing in November. Um, oh, cool. that's called, it's called Silent Generations. It's based off of the High Women's self-titled song, um, The High Women. <laughs> and that, if you haven't heard the song, it's the most beautiful song. Every time I hear it, I cry and I've listened to it well over 200 times. <laughs> but, uh, the premise of the song is, uh, there are, there are four women in The High Women. Brandi Carlisle's in it. She's one of my favorite singers of all time. Um, uh, but everybody in this group is just phenomenal. And they, each portray a different archetype of somebody in history of a, mm. of a woman and what she has gone through in order to take care of her family, take care of, you know, her culture, the people around her and inevitably died for. And so mm. I took this idea and I've turned it into a series of 12 paintings um, that cover archetypes throughout history of women doing just that, of what they've had to sacrifice in order for the next generation to have it better than they did. And so, um, so it's a, the same kind of concept as working with my wallpaper. I work in a collection. I come up with an overall arching idea, and then I try and create pieces that go within that. Um, at the same time, sometimes I'll just like, you know, we were just on vacation in Tennessee, and so that we were by this beautiful lake, and now I have a million photo references of this lake. I'm sure that I'll just be like, you know, I just want to play today. I'm just going to take one of these photos, and I'm going to paint this lake, and it has nothing to do with any other collection. It's just one and done. <laughs> Um, so there's some of that too. Sometimes you just need to play and have fun and try something new and not be completely stuck in this world of collections that can be a little overbearing sometimes. <laughs> yeah. And I'm sure doing that gives you a little, um, inspiration when you do come back to it. Yeah. Yeah. Just like having the rest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A little bit of like brain rest from like this mindset that I was in of this type of material or this concept. And now I get to just go do something else where I don't have to focus and like working for this collection on like an art show there's a lot of pressure so you're like well this has to be you know perfect I, to a degree there's no such thing as perfect but this has to be to the, my best standard so right. that I can show it in the show versus some of these other things where I'm like eh, if it doesn't turn out I can just throw it away like I right, don't really right. care. no one has to ever <laughs> see it <laughs> yeah exactly like well just you know maybe it'll be social media content maybe nobody will ever see it <laughs> So what is, um, is, is this the room that you're in that you do, that you're creative in, I guess, that you do your yes. painting? Yeah. Is yep. there um, a specific way that you've set it up, the layout and everything to um, kind of assist in that process? Yeah, it's kind of set up, I mean, to a degree, it's a small room, so to a degree, there's only one way to really set things up, but, mm -hmm. um, I have it. So I used to have my desk facing the wall, which I didn't like. Um, I started getting really into feng shui and reading about feng shui. And it was like, mm -hmm. in some ways that's great, but also like my back is to all the windows, which also made it hard for like zoom calls. Cause I was always dark and in shadow and then backlit by all these windows. Um, so I decided to turn my desk around. So now I get to face all the windows, which was just like on a spiritual level, such a great decision. Cause now there's this beautiful tree outside one of my windows that I get to watch it change through the seasons, which is really wow. fun. And I can see birds flying by and it's just really nice to face the windows. Um, to my right is my grandmother's um, sewing table that I've turned into my art desk and I've got all my paints and all, it's basically just like my painting zone. And then that way my desk is all the electronics. So it's got the computer and the extra screen and all that stuff. So I can do all the illustrator things and be in meetings and that kind of stuff. Um, and then I do have like a little sitting chair. It's my blue velvet chair. And behind it is the gallery wall on top of the wallpaper. And right next to that is the world's largest printer so that I can print my <laughs> prints. Um, and then books everywhere. I love, I love art books. I love any kind of books, but in my office is pretty much all art books. So if I just need a little bit of inspiration or some words of wisdom, I can just go and pull a book and get some ideas before getting into whatever zone I need to get into. Yeah, that's a great idea. You know, I've never thought about or heard somebody say they pull a book for art inspiration, but it makes sense. I mean, sometimes you just oh, yeah. need to read something that inspires you. Yeah. I also, um, 
I, I subscribe to nice magazine. So Magnolia journal is one of my favorites. And I save mm-hmm. every one of their issues because they're evergreen. Like I'll be like, Oh, I remember that was in a fall issue. Let me go look at all the fall issues and like find a recipe or find an artist or whatever it was. Um, and then uppercase is another magazine that's made for artists. It's a quarterly magazine. It's, I think it's made in Canada. Um, but that's been a really fun one that just gives such great ideas. And then, um, origin is the other one and origin is literally every spread is just a different artist in every one of their issues Mm -hmm. and so it just shows different pictures of their work with some like little tidbit advice and I just like flipping through the pages and looking at different like you've got photographer you've got interior designers you've got painters you've got uh, wallpaper designers like it's literally any kind of creative endeavor that you can find inspiration from and that is also a quarterly magazine I, yeah, those are probably my three favorites. Yeah, yeah, those sound really great. I need to subscribe to some good journals. I mean, magazines. Um, yeah. Yeah, sometimes you just, you're like, I need to go for a walk or something. I'm, I feel, I'm feeling really stuck. Do you, what yeah. else do you do for inspiration? You said it sounds like music is a big part of your life. Uh, yeah, I like music. I like, um, I go, nature is probably the number one way I get inspired. So if it's just, if it's a busy day and I can't get out, I'll just go to my backyard and like get my feet in the grass and just like spend five minutes just being outside. But I'll take our dog for a walk. Travel has been another big one, Uh, whether it's traveling inside the U.S. Obviously traveling outside the U.S. is really inspiring. My my husband and I love um, Central and South America. We are really big into the Latin cultures. Um, next summer we're planning a big trip to go to Europe. So we're excited about neither one of us have ever been to Europe. I I've always focused on developing countries. So it'll be interesting to go to, to more developed countries and see what that experience is like. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure you'll come back very inspired. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. I'm sure I'll be overwhelmed with how much inspiration I have. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm looking forward to that. I'll have to look out for your European wallpaper collection. <laughs> I, yeah, I know. Who knows what that'll bring. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure that'll be awesome. Um, so I love your, your tea party and it, uh, I, I feel like it gives a little peek into how you live slowly, but I was wondering if there was anything else, um, that you do just for in your own life to slow down that you can inspire some, some others. Yeah. So I want to preface it with as much as I try and live a slow life life gets fast, life gets overwhelming. And we all, you know, it's this ebb and flow of yeah. things. And it's just coming back to this idea of like, oh, I'm noticing that I'm like really anxious or my shoulders are hunched up towards my ears or right now. <laughs> you know, I know like all of us right now just adjusted our shoulders and like, oh, yeah. posture, yeah, that's a thing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and so it's just noticing those things. I think, I think slowing down is really just about coming back to this moment and noticing how do I feel in my body? So oh, my shoulders are tense. Okay, I'm going to roll those out. Oh, I'm not breathing. Maybe I should take a couple deep breaths. Oh, my hips feel really tight. Like maybe I should get up and walk around. And so Mm. that's a great place to start. I start each day with a morning routine. So I wake up around around six. I wake up around six and I go make um, tea. And then I sit on the couch and I have a book that I read and my dog will come over and he sits with me. And my husband will come probably a couple minutes after me and he'll make his coffee And we just are on the couch for probably like an hour. And then um, some days, if I'm being really good, I'll do a 20 minute meditation. Other days I'm not being good. And I just go into my day and that's, you know, making a good nutritious breakfast that makes me feel good so that I have the energy to run through the day and then, you know, get into my office. And, um, you know, there's really simple things that I think have made a huge difference of, I try not to check my email all day. I don't have any Uh, I don't have the app on my phone, so I don't check email on my phone at all. I only check it when I'm on a desktop. I um, I limit my social media consumption. So the most brilliant way that I've been able to do this is I limit how many people I follow on Instagram. Mm. So I'm only allowed to follow 50 people. And it's amazing because you can be like, I'm just going to scroll through Instagram. And five minutes later, it tells you you're up to date. That's everything. (laughs) All the people you followed, that's all their recent posts. You're like, oh. I guess I should get off of this then because there's nothing else to look at. There's nothing new. Yeah, that's you could you can continue to go down the hole if you want, but sure, sure. Based on the people you've said you want to follow, 
you're out of content. And, <laughs> and that's been a, and it also just manages like, what am I consuming? Because I don't need to be consuming all of it. It can be really anxiety inducing to be following a million news outlets and all these different brands that I'm comparing myself to, or thinking that I need to buy from and mm-hmm. all that. So it's like, who inspires me, who makes me feel good. And when I'm scrolling, if I notice that like, I get really jealous or I get angry or I have some sort of negative emotion around something, I'm, it might be time to unfollow them. Maybe not forever, but just for now. And sure. so just noticing it's really, that's really what I do. Like living slowly yeah. is all about just coming back to like, how do I feel in my body? How is this making me approach the world? Am I being my best person? No. Okay. What, what's like a small way that I could change that right now? Mm-hmm. Yeah. The small ways are the, definitely the way to go. Cause yeah, otherwise it's just so overwhelming to think, let me make all of these giant changes and I'm going to change my life overnight. And yeah. That never goes. It doesn't well. usually happen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I was looking on your website and I saw, uh, well, I guess, tell us about Layla's glasses. Oh yeah. So, um, <laughs> Layla is my niece, my sister's daughter, and she is like, uh, she's three years old now. She turns four in a month, Um, but she had to get glasses. And so my sister was so worried about her getting glasses and feeling different because she's also adopted. So she, she noticeably looks different than our family, Um, Mm -hmm. which, you know, she's four. So she hasn't noticed that yet. Right. Um, (laughs) But so my sister's just really worried about like, what is this going to mean for her? Is she going to be made fun of because she has to wear glasses? And so my mother had this dream one night about the storyline of this little girl getting glasses and all of the reasons that she didn't want to wear them. And then her whole family came together and wore glasses for a dinner party to make her feel like she wasn't different and that she was beautiful with her glasses too. And my mom's like, I think we should make this into a children's book. And like, Aww. you have to agree to it though, because you're the one who's going to illustrate it. And I was like, <laughs> I don't know. I've never done that. It's like 40 images. That's Oof. like a 40 image collection that you basically have to put together and they yeah. have to be super consistent. And I'm like, this sounds terrifying. So my mom had told my sister about the dream and my sister for months would be like, you guys have to do this. You have to do this. And I was like, I, I don't, I don't think so. So my mom and I finally agreed, okay, let's do it, but we're not going to tell a soul about it because Uh, at any point we get to say, we don't want to do this anymore and just throw the project away. Sure. So we started it, we did it, we finished it. We did a Kickstarter this summer to raise money for the first print of it, um, which went extremely well. I actually just mailed out all of the books that were um, ordered through the Kickstarter yesterday. And oh, so wow. now this sweet little book is in the world and it exists. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. Aw. Well, I might have to order a copy. I actually just had um my first daughter, my first kid a month oh, ago. Fun. So <laughs> oh, I congratulations. Think be, thank you. I think that would be a um a really sweet book to read with her. <laughs> yeah, it's a fun read. And then um I mean, it's, it's really great for our family. Cause we have all these like family reference, like every person in our family is in the book. And Aww. so there's all these, like, you know, we, we presented it to our family cause nobody knew about it. So we announced it to the family that this was finished and we had the final book there with us, um, on father's day. And Aww, so that's so beautiful. We did, yeah. So we did like a family reading with it and all my nieces and nephews are coming over and like, Oh, that's me. Like I'm in the book. And Uh, my other niece just got glasses and she's like, so am I going to be, are you going to make a sequel? And it's going to be about me. And I was like, Oh honey, no, (laughs) (laughs) we're not not doing like I might do another children's book again. I would love it. If somebody came in and was like, I have the book. We want to pay you to be the illustrator and do it that way. Like the more normal way, but it's a lot. It's a lot, a lot of work. I'm sure. Is that, are, are you kind of um, relieved to have that off your plate now? and be able to concentrate on everything else. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's been a, it's been a two-year project. So getting, working with my mom on like finalizing the words and getting all the words done. And then once she gives me the words, I could like thumbnail draw everything and then get into like drawing and painting all. And and I think it was, it wasn't exactly 40. It was like 35 or 36 images. And so, and they're, they're hand painted. And then I took them into the, and then like did some digital updates to make sure like skin colors and clothing and colors and everything were completely consistent across the board. And, um, 
yeah, it was, it was a ton. And then I had no idea what I was doing. So like, I'm just making this up as I go. I'm like, is this how you illustrate a children's book? Is this how you do this? It is now. Well, you figured it out. Yeah, it is now. Yeah. It's how you do it. <laughs> yep. It's done. It made it. So yes, that's how you do that's it. That's great. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. Um, I love how, how many different things that you, different creative things that you're into. I guess that goes back to what you said at the beginning of just always changing jobs, always yeah. trying out something new, but yeah, I mean, it's fun. It's, it's great to get to do, um, different projects, reach different audiences and, mm-hmm. and still feel a little bit of cohesion throughout the brand, um, which is a day by day challenge with that, but always the goal. <laughs> sure. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I have one more question. Um, I like to ask, especially artists, what kind of art do you have in your home from other artists? Well, 90% of the art in my home is probably art that I did. Um, <laughs> I have, I'm actually trying to think. I have, a, I have a few pieces that were from my grandmother's home that I, there's this one piece in this beautiful, huge gold frame of, I'm assuming it's a mother and a daughter. It could also be two sisters because they're both fairly young. Um, but they're just kind of, one is sitting and the other is leaning into her. And I, I remember looking at it in my grandmother's living room growing up. And it just feels very like, I don't know, maybe, maybe Renaissance. Is it Renaissance? It might be the time period after Renaissance, but it's like a very dark background and it's like an oil painting portrait kind of thing. Mm. Um, so it's got very old vibes. I don't think my husband likes it at all. And I was like, too bad. Like, <laughs> this is my grandmother's. It's never leaving. I love this yeah. thing. Uh-huh. Um, we also have this piece we bought from um, Denver has a lot of like, uh, they're like farmers markets, but for artists. And so uh, we love going and just looking around and meeting new people and getting inspired. And we found this one artist that he has this obsession with trees. And so um, he's very illustrative. He does all of his prints are screen printed that he does himself. And so it's this woman sitting in an apple tree with her arm extended and she's kind of pointing to the moon. But then when you look closer, you realize that it's a, um, a concert poster for the band Grizzly Bear. And oh. it turned out that it was actually for a show that we went to. Oh my and gosh. So we were like, well, this was so perfect. Like we love the, the art. And then we were actually at that show, which was like five years before we bought the piece. And we're like, well, we have to get this piece. So those are probably two of the ones I can think of that I did not paint or are not photographs that are on our walls. <laughs> That's awesome. They both have great stories yeah. behind them too. Yeah, they're a lot That's of fun. Nice. We also have like, in our living room, we have a big record wall because my husband is a musician. So we, we listen to a lot of music and we love, um, we love albums, like the old school record player albums. So I installed a like gallery wall, but you just get to put your favorite records up on the wall so that they can be on display. And oh, nice. that's been a fun way to add some art to the walls too. How do you hang them? Or do you have like little brackets or? Yeah, they're like little mini shelves. So they're, oh, they're okay. like eight inches long and like an inch in depth. And so they just balance on there. So you can take them down and still play the record. Um, mm-hmm. And then you can like mix them up. So if you're like, oh, I'm tired of that record or we just got this new one, like you can rearrange them and have fun. That's, um, that's just, that's a great idea. It's giving me some ideas if you to have basically a changing gallery wall whether it's records or yeah. art and just have individual little shelves for it and just yeah. switch it out all the time I mean one of my favorite gallery walls is getting frames that are like if you like get a little bit more organized you get like say nine frames that are all the exact same frame and mat but then the the you have like photographs or paintings or kids art any of that kind of stuff but you can switch it out whenever you want and so that oh, wall yeah. can always feel fresh but mm-hmm. the, you know, the frames just stay consistent. So there is this great design element to that, that feels really elegant, but also always updated. Right. Right. Yeah. I always tell people, don't be afraid to change your, change your space. Even if you put in a lot of time to design it and you like the way it is you, when you change over the years in life, like you need to change your space. It needs to Oh, yeah. with you don't keep it the same <laughs> yeah well, what, one of my favorite designers um she's she talks about shopping your house all the time where like <laughs> you go into one room and you'll be like oh I have this figurine and I have this picture and I have this set of books that would actually go great on this bookshelf down in this other room and you basically just like are rearranging or things are like seasonally you can even have like 
different paintings that you have up on your wall for different seasons. And then, mm -hmm. oh, it's fall time. I want this painting up on the wall and I'll move this one back into the closet and switch it out throughout the year. And it always makes your, it just makes your space feel really fresh without having to go like buy a ton of stuff, right. just switching out for the seasons or just moving from room to room. And it always just feels fresh. I love that shopping your own house. You could shop yeah. your uh, shop your basement storage space too. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Set it up with shelves and like a little shopping basket. That would be really funny. That would Go be so and collect funny. Your things. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's one way to save some money, right? <laughs> oh, it's the best way. Or if you could uh, do it with friends and shop each other's houses. <laughs> oh yeah, there you go. That's a good idea too. Like a uh, decoration exchange instead of a book exchange. Yeah. Yeah, mm. exactly. Might have to do that instead of a, along with a tea party. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much, Katie. This has been so great. Um, how can people, I'll list your links in the show notes, but um, let people know how they can find you and find your wallpaper collection. Yeah, so everything is on my website, shopmodernmagic.com. Um, I have a newsletter. You'll get a little pop-up when you arrive there about signing up for my newsletter. I send out a weekly newsletter. Um, it's mostly about tips on living slowly, finding the calm in your life, but every once in a while you'll get announcements about sales or new projects that are happening as well. Um, you can also find my children's book, my prints, and all the home decor on my website, um, as well as links to all my socials so you can find me and engage with me there. Awesome. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. This is so much fun. Yeah. Yeah. This is great. I'm about to go. Um, I, my husband will kill me if I buy more wallpaper, but I'm about to go to <laughs> favors anyways. And maybe, maybe favorite a few, <laughs> you know, just bookmark them for when the time is right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm in the middle of putting up, um, I got Alice in Wonderland wallpaper from rifle paper in my oh. daughter's nursery it's so cute and it's that really heavy like linen one that you were talking yeah. about um yeah. but I'm I'm putting it up right next to her crib and she's already just staring at it and like it gives her something fun to look at it's got really uh it's got like black and a lot of black and white contrasting strokes oh, cool. not art so yeah um yeah she loves looking at it <laughs> oh that's so fun but yeah, no, this has been great. I'm, I'm a huge wallpaper fan. So I was really excited when you reached out. I was like, this will be different and interesting for sure. So, so thanks. Again. Yeah, well, hopefully, hopefully we can convert everyone into being wallpaper fans. <laughs> Agreed. Yeah, that's my life goal now. <laughs> Along with you, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I hope you have a good rest of your Friday and a good weekend. And I'll let you know, um, Actually, I'll go, I'll just ask you now instead of emailing you, will you please send me a picture of your grandma's table? I'll put that up oh, yeah. on um, the show notes and a profile image yep. of you. I and I will actually that. see, selfishly want to see your, um, your art deco wall. <laughs> oh yeah. I'll send you a picture of that too. Okay. <laughs> I have, I have plenty of them. So awesome. Um, and then do you know when this will launch? It So I'm actually, I'm bad. I've stocked up on interviews. And so I'm like two months out right now. Okay, um, I've been okay. taking my time posting them, but I will give you um, a heads up. I can probably, let me look at the calendar. I can see, give you a better estimate. Let's see. It's probably going to be November. Okay. Perfect. All right. That's all good. right. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah. Well, I guess I'll talk to you later. <laughs> all right. Sounds good. Thank okay. you so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Be sure to check out the complete show notes for today's episode at trimspaces.com forward slash spaces speak. The notes include a link to the YouTube video of the episode, the full guests bio, links to connect with them, a summary of key ideas from the episode, and a photo of their favorite piece of furniture or decor.